Dear students, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the course of History of English Literature, New Classics to Date. Today we will be discussing about romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. I am Muhammad Asif Khan, lecturer, Department of English, Kohat University of Science and Technology. Dear students, uh, agenda for today's discussion is that first of all I will introduce Samuel Taylor Coleridge to you and then I will give you the brief introduction of best known poems Ancient Mariner, The Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, Christabel and his uh, a fragment work Kobla Khan. Uh, then we will have a short discussion on his uh, major literary criticism works the most important out of them is Biographia Literaria. So this is the agenda for today's discussion. So let us start from the introduction of Samuel Taylor Coleridge. He was born on 21st October 1772. Again, the period of turmoil, the period of revolutions, the period of great changes in the history. And uh, he is uh, the poet, literary critic, philosopher, uh, religious scholar. So these are the qualities which he had. And he is the co-founder. We, we all of us uh, know this. And because uh, we already discussed it uh, in the discussion of uh, the introduction of uh, a romantic period, because he is uh, the one who co-started uh, the Romantic Movement in England. He was also the member of uh, Lake Poet and uh, one another important name which is given to him is uh, the Sage of Highgate. He lived his uh, last days in Highgate and because of that he is also known as Sage of Highgate. So these are some of the titles and uh, the key areas in which he worked. His uh, brilliance and his uh, that strength is that he is uh, paired with uh, William Wordsworth, though he is uh, opposite in some of his qualities, but basically balancing and harmonizing Wordsworth qualities. In Romantic Movement, Wordsworth dealt with uh, naturalism, one of the important aspects of uh, that movement. And Coleridge uh, made his uh, uh, contribution in the field of supernatural. That is one another important aspect of uh, Romantic Movement. Like Wordsworth, Coleridge also came under the spell of uh, the French Revolution and uh, uh, he also connected his uh, uh, hopes and anticipated uh, the liberation and emancipation of uh, subjugated uh, section of mankind. But uh, those very aspirations and ambitions uh, were uh, expressed, very well expressed in his uh, poems like Religious Musing, Destiny of Nations and Ode to the Departing Years. Uh, political ambitions of uh, Coleridge are very, very superbly expressed uh, in these very poems. Same like Wordsworth, uh, he also changed uh, his uh, beliefs about uh, French Revolution because of, uh, uh, because of the lawlessness and lack of control and the lack of responsibility that, uh, that appeared in that moment. And he showed that uh, change of thought in a beautiful poem, France and Ode. Again, he shifted uh, from uh, those uh, revolutionary thoughts, uh, revolutionary beliefs and aspirations, ambitions, change their objectives uh, and 
came toward the conservative uh, thoughts those traditional thoughts uh, that it were uh, very common in, in that period so coleridge was basically a man of colossal personality very huge intellect uh, great brain but uh, he lacked uh, uh, will power because he was uh, suffering from many diseases and to to get out of that pain he was uh, addicted uh, to opium uh, that uh, prevented him from completing many of his works uh, in the field of poetry so whatever he written whatever he written is uh, of outstanding quality but uh, all these works most of the works are fragmentary and those works are in pieces incomplete disconnected so he worked uh, i already uh, told you in the beginning of the lecture that he worked and he uh, contributed in a number of fields like religion philosophy literary criticism but uh, we see that uh, these works are somehow incomplete and the end i will admit that uh, he exercised outstanding uh, and uh, everlasting influence on the coming generations his best two known poems are the rhyme of ancient mariner in short uh, it is famous as uh, the ancient Mar- mariner and christabel these are the high water marks of supernaturalism but uh, the very important thing about uh, poetry of college is that uh, he saved supernaturalism from becoming very that ordinary type of sensationalism because he linked uh, supernaturalism with uh, psychological truths emotional and uh, that uh, uh, very much uh, uh, mental truths uh, that that are included in his poetry so basically he he absorbed he grasped all these spells of medievalism uh, within himself and then these very things uh, were being mixed by in the mysteries uh, uh, and uh, different unknown things obscure ambiguous type of things he mixed them with uh, those spells of medievalism and uh, and then that were surrounded by the common realities of everyday life so it is basically a mixture of realism uh, supernaturalism and a reality naturalism so it's a mixture of these things which make uh, which make his poetry outstanding now i move toward the ancient mariner uh the full name of this poem is the rhyme of uh, ancient mariner basically uh, this very poem is uh, uh the poetic masterpiece of courage it is uh, the longest poem by samuel courage uh, and it was written in 1797 98 time period and it was um, for the first time it was published in uh, lyrical ballads so again a supernatural uh, aspect is very very prominently visible in this work because we first of all you will see a phantom or goose shape crew of dead man again curse that superstition superstitions and curse of albatross a bird that is flying over there with that we have that polar spirit a magical breeze wind is blowing there and making everything frozen number of other supernatural things are happening there so the most important thing thing as i told you earlier that he very superbly mixed uh, and artlessly mixed uh, that supernaturalism with reality that makes uh, his poetry outstanding so the sense of uh, reality absolute reality in this way he managed to create that uh, suspension of disbelief 
that we start believing those absurdities. So his art is uh, very supreme because it's, it seems artless. So college gives us uh, those uh, connections, time to time connections or glimpses of uh, the wedding feast uh, to which uh, these mariners uh, have been invited. So very nicely he's uh, taking us towards uh, uh, the end point. The poem is basically fashioned in uh, Middle Ages and uh, but you will see that these uh, uh, Middle Ages or the past is not uh, uh, reproduced in uh, in very ordinary way because uh, because uh, we see that uh, uh, the past is uh, not uh, created uh, uh, emotionlessly the whole poem is basically based on a on a vision and uh, it is uh, basically a fine product of uh, of the unearthly and very fine fancy of the great poet and uh, and the reality of the world but in spite of this uh, wildness and uh, its uh, superstition medieval superstitions uh, and fabricated uh, baseless type of happenings it is very important very vital because uh, our imagination is uh, believing those pictures. It is basically a faithful picture of nature and it uh, is very much connected, connected to the psychological insight. Uh, so when uh, we can say that it is simply humanity uh, in this very poem. In this poem, poet deals in uh, uh, in a beautiful manner with uh, those uh, original and primitive emotions of human beings. Those are love, hate, pain, remorse or guilt and hope. Uh, he ends uh, his poem uh, with these words that he prays best who loves best. Means he prays best who loves best. Uh, it is very much uh, an artificial ending. It is not an artificial ending of the poem uh, because uh, he did it uh, with a popular saying. So it is a fine summing up uh, and uh, you, you can see that uh, this is uh, the spirit uh, which uh, is uh, regularly appearing in the entire poem. Uh, it is a simple ballad, ballad form, story, imagery is uh, exquisite, outstanding extraordinary and we see that uh, there is uh, a very sweet harmony of the verses again very suitable suitable phrases and all these things are woven in uh, artistic whole that makes uh, uh, the poem representative of romantic school of poetry so the second poem again uh, Christabel it is a fragment. Uh, it was again written in uh, 1797, the, the peak period of uh, these uh, two writers, Coleridge and William Wordsworth. And uh, uh, it's uh, basically in parts. Uh, this very poem is, it was written in two parts. The first part was completed in uh, 1797 and the second part was completed in 1800. The Coleridge uh, uh, planned three additional parts but uh, these were never completed basically it is a, a story of a pure young girl and uh, who fell under uh, the spell of a wizard uh, and uh, her name is uh, Geraldine and that supernatural aspect is there we see that uh, strange Marley is there uh, but uh, there are many passages of uh, outstanding, extraordinary poetry which are mixed with the supernatural terror that was very common in the, in the Gothic novels of that time period. In this very poem, 
though it is uh, uh, minorly inferior to the ancient mariner we see the same environment the same atmosphere outstanding type of uh, um, that has covered that uh, medieval atmosphere that has covered the whole poem and everything is uh, very much unclear vague formless and uh, blurred and you will be indefinite uh, with that what is going to happen and so in that ambiguous environment the things are happening uh, again as i told you earlier that it is incomplete poem so, uh, one thing very important that uh, uh, the diction as uh, that was being decided by coleridge and wordsworth that they are going to change the diction of the poetry from the, that complicated diction which was being followed by the 18th century poets to the simple diction that is the conversational diction of uh, the society again in this very poem like ancient mariner coleridge has used a very simple diction and uh, we see that uh, the, that style is very spontaneous as if as if everything is coming effortlessly now i'm moving towards some other uh, conversational poems in which uh, uh, coleridge used blank verse and you will see that easiness in language that uh, diction of the common people or the rustic people is being used in the in, in these poems and this is the list of these poems uh, some very common Uh, and the famous poems of uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge are being listed here you just note down and i am moving forward toward another important poem of uh, st college and that is uh, kubla khan so, uh, kubla khan is another uh, fragment poem uh, in this poem coleridge has uh, again uh, painted uh, a dream vision dream or a vision but this very dream is oriental or the eastern dream picture again the whole poem uh, came to the coleridge in a dream uh, one morning when he was uh, sleeping and upon awakening he started writing hastily but uh, unfortunately he was uh, interrupted after uh, he had completed 54 lines and uh, that poem kubla khan is uh, it was never finished so again very outstanding poem one of the famous poems of st coleridge in the field of uh, literary criticism uh, we see very important work uh, uh, by graphia literaria published in uh, 1817 this very work is basically the the literary criticism on uh, on the poetry of even on the poetry of the william wordsworth uh, because uh, um, this very work is uh, uh, autobiographical explanation of uh, st coleridge's life uh, it is written in 23 chapters and it expresses uh, the coleridge uh, expression on the literature of that time period uh, it is not uh, that simple basically it is analysis of uh, very wide range of philosophical principles of uh, literature ranging from you can start it from aristotle amel kant and schelling and he applied the, that is the most important thing that he applied these very principle to the poetry of philip wordsworth uh, in this work uh, we come across some of the key concepts being introduced by coleridge that is uh, imagination very very powerful discussion on the imagination and he uh, divided imagination into primary and secondary imagination and then we see that he compared imagination with fancy another important work uh, is uh, the coleridge's essays and lectures on shakespeare and some other uh, old poets so these are the important uh, Uh, critical uh, works uh, uh, literary criticism and being done by st coleridge so, uh, he wrote a number of other poems like love uh, and the dark lady youth and age uh, dejection and ode another famous work 
all these poems are very graceful so you will see that tenderness that softness and uh, it was uh, having that uh, subjective uh, uh, or uh, personal emotional touches uh, and that gave it the quality of uh, gave it the quality of romantic poetry with that uh, uh, he has a number of poems that are full of uh, those uh, natural scenes but his uh, strength uh, is in the marvelous dream faculty in the end i will say that uh, his reputation as a poet rests on the ancient mariner the rhyme of ancient mariner cristobal cobla khan in which uh, he touched the heights of romantic poetry thank you very much uh, for passionately listening take care allah hafiz and uh, see you inshallah in the next uh, lecture on uh, another romantic poet